Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Audio Files. My name is Steve Westman. I am so excited to be talking about this topic today. So I'm sure the reason why you press play is because you saw the title, MoFi, The Nightfly and the Digital Master Tape Source Debate. So for a long time, I guess since the uh, Mobile Fidelity One Step came out, there's been a big debate over what source was used, what master tape was used, considering this was a digital source to press or cut this album. So I want to get into that today, uh, give you my theory and my take and what, where I think the master tape source came from. Um, I also want to talk first about the history of the Nightfly album, sort of the production of it, the players involved. Um, then we'll get into, you know, what master tape source did Mo Mobile Fidelity use. And then I'll just quickly just go over the whole uh, one-step process uh, that Mobile Fidelity uses, because I do feel that the one-step process brings you the closest to the, the master tapes. And uh, that's why it does sound so incredible. So to begin, The Nightfly was Donald Fagan's debut solo album. It was recorded in 1981, 1982, um, both in New York and L.A., it was produced by longtime Steely Dan producer Gary Cates, along with longtime and actually the only album engineer that Steely Dan and Donald Fagan used throughout um, their career was uh, Roger Nichols, who, who was the album engineer. And that name, uh, Roger Nichols, please uh, remember it because I think as we go through this today, um, I'm going to give you my, I guess, my reasons or conclusions as to why um, and what master tape was used based on uh, what I think Roger Nichols did as the album engineer and also based on uh, some more information that I'll really really release to you today. Uh, the thing is about the master tape I think in the debate there I think Moba Fidelity has been a little bit vague on the master tape. I mean again um, my last video we talked about this right um, it says original master recording here so I mean we know they use the master tapes but what it doesn't say anywhere uh, looking through the inserts it doesn't say what was used, what source was used. So that's what I want to, again, get into today. So The Nightfly, um, as in, if anyone knows or doesn't know, um, it was the second fully digitally recorded pop album using 3M's 32 track and four track recorders. Now, just a little bit of fun fact, the first digitally recorded pop album was actually Ry Cooter's Bop Till You Drop. I believe that was uh, recorded in around 1979 using the same 3M technology. Now, uh, a little bit more back history on the Nightfly. I mean, extremely successful in, uh, in 1983 during the uh, Grammy Awards. It was nominated for seven awards, including Best Engineered Recording of a Non-Classical Album. Of course, that was uh, Roger Nichols that was the engineer. Um, and then for years, this album, like the first track of the album, you guys probably know the uh, the song IGY or International Geophysical Year, was uh, the song a lot of hi-fi companies use to you know, test their equipment or have the customers um, listen to this song while they while they they played played the equipment. Um, and it was also used during Michael Jackson's history tour by all the sound engineers and the sound people to test all the equipment. And so this song, IGY, was played um, just before a Michael Jackson concert to make sure everything sounded um, as perfect as it, as it can. Which just goes to show you the production value that uh, you know Gary Cates, Roger Nichols, and of course Don Fagan put into this. I mean, it is a masterpiece. Uh, maybe I'm biased because it's one of my favorite albums, but it truly is a masterpiece um, as well. So what source, what digital source did Mobile Fidelity use to cut their 1983 half-speed pressing and their most current one-step? So here's my 1983 half-speed pressing. So on the back here, I'm just going to read it. It says here, it was specially plated and pressed on high-definition super vinyl by Victor Company of Japan. And they say the source, the original stereo master tape. That's what it says. It doesn't say the original stereo digital master tape directly from the 3M machines. It just says the original stereo master tape. And then of course, this is the 1983 version. The one step just says source master tapes, original master tapes. Now, what does that mean? So. A little bit more history here, I think we need to learn a little bit more about the production um, and uh, the cutting of vinyl, especially for this album, but 
in general, actually. And so let's rewind a little bit first. Um, let's go back to 1982. So the original, the original master engineer who cut this cut this album to vinyl was none other than Robert Ludwig. Uh, you might have heard Robert Ludwig's name. I think he's most famous for cutting the hot mix of Led Zeppelin II, which, by the way, sounds fantastic. Maybe I need to do another video on that one as well. Um, so you got to think about what we, where we were in, in the context of 1982. So we were just in the infancy of CDs. We know that Nightfly was digitally recorded, but there was still an appetite for vinyl. And that is very important to really remember here because normally when, when a um, master and engineer um, cuts vinyl, they also need to get a source. So the source was, of course, like we, we have to debate this again, the digital master tapes. But I don't think they actually used the actual digital tapes off the 3M machine and monkeyed around with the back of it to um, you know, make it a digital output and and uh, source it that way because it doesn't say anywhere in the inserts that they you know they use the actual master tapes and use the 3m to play back those master 3m machine to play back those master tapes so what is happening here and where the where the source of these master tapes are is when this album was mixed by roger nichols um, there was also a set of high quality analog masters that were mixed along with the digital ones because you need analog masters to cut a vinyl record. If you use just the digital source, which I don't think they can't, they could because of the technology constraints back in 82 to do that, there'd be so much distortion. Um, it just wouldn't sound right. So, you know, if you obviously listen to an original, as you can see from my left shoulder here, an original Robert Ludwig pressing, it does sound amazing as well. So um, there was an appetite for vinyl still in 1982. So there, you know, Robert Ludwig was going to cut this um, to vinyl, but he needed... He needed, uh, he needed a mix for that. So there is an analog master mix is what I am, uh, my theory. I, again, I don't have proof, but it just makes sense. If you, if you sort of look at even today's standards, a lot of the master engineers who uh, cut vinyl, they'll always suggest if it's a digital source to also mix a set of uh, analog master tapes as well. Just because again, uh, there's so much distortion and it just doesn't sound the same um, if you're if you're to actually cut it with uh, high quality analog master tapes as well, so that is my theory when it comes to the source of what MoFi did. So MoFi again, I'll repeat it one more time, did not use the digital tapes directly from the 3M machine. I don't think it's possible that uh, they could roll that big old 40 year old machine into the studio a few years back and and cut the super you know the the uh, super vinyl um, one step from that. I do believe that Ludwig was given through Roger Nichols, the, the engineer, um, a set of high quality analog master mixes. Now, the, sec the last part of my theory and, and my, why I'm going to conclude and say this is what happened um, was this. Just further to conclude where I think Mobile Fidelity got their master from, um, like I said before, I don't believe they got it directly from the 3M machines using the, the tapes there. I believe that they used or they got the analog masters that were mastered by, originally by Robert Ludwig, which is the reason why um, you know a lot of people love the original Robert Ludwig pressing because it's the same master tapes that were used for that vinyl cut as the cut um, of the Mobile Fidelity back in 83. And of course, the same tapes that were used when uh, cutting the one step that was done, I think now, what, three, four years ago. So I found this very interesting interview um, that Walter Becker did not long ago when he was talking about um, the one-step process. So this is fascinating. I'm just going to read it to everyone here and um, listen to this very, very closely. He says here, Walter Becker once said when talking about cutting vinyl from the digital masters of Two Against Nature, and again, Two Against Nature was uh, Steely Dan's last collaboration, both him and Donald Fagan. Just, um, just to re remind everyone that the Two Against Nature album was digitally recorded by none other, than, none other than Roger Nichols, the sound engineer. So he said this, such a pressing would incorporate all limitations of digital audio, such as frequency response limit, converter artifacts, etc. He went on to say, plus all the limitations of vinyl, which is phase shift, uh, limiting frequency response, noise distortion, etc. And he goes and says this, uh, with the, he goes, does the one step minimize the vinyl limitations? And he goes, I'm sure it does, but can it improve on the 16-bit 44 KH, 
masters or does it just sound different for different sake? Better yet, are these differences worth a hundred dollars? So Becker goes on to say, however, at the time this album was mixed, a set of high quality analog master mixes were made with the digital ones, knowing that some people prefer vinyl. So that is very interesting right there. So back in the year 2000, Roger Nichols, who recorded this digitally, also mixed a set of high quality analog mixes as well. So that leads me to believe that my conclusion that Mobile Fidelity used a set of analog mixes as the master tape for pressing the Nightfly One Step is that they used analog mixes. So the last part of this uh, today's video, I just wanted to talk quickly about the uh, Mobile Fidelity's One Step process. Many of you guys own One Step, so you already know the process. Um, if anyone's looking to purchase a One Step, um, here's the process and why these One Steps do sound, I believe, the best out of any any pressing. Um, it's pretty much this. This is the reason I actually pulled it pulled this insert right out of my one step So as you can see here as you can see here um, Moba Fidelity like we've determined uses the original master recording from there They cut a lacquer with that and they make it a one step because they use a convert Okay, and that convert is used to actually press the vinyl so what it says up here is this, the removal of the two steps in the plating process or the two stages of generational loss reveals more musical detail and dramatic reduction of surface noise, which is so true. Um, <laughs> this, my, one, my Nightfly One Step is so quiet, uh, it's incredible. And now the latest Stevie Ray Vaughan album that just came out um, is incredibly quiet as well. So the One Steps, you know, do sound amazing, very low, low noise level, um, which, you know, I think is one of the big reasons what you're paying for. Plus it's a 45 RPM. So there's a lot more space for these, for these records, um, you know, to cut these records, to get the most sound out of the master recordings as well. So if you're looking to buy a one step, um, you know, obviously look at the prices they have gone up depending on the, on the, uh, on the, um, artist. But if you're in a, have a budget right now and you don't have a lot of money for, let's say, you know, to buy a Nightfly album, just find the original one, the, the 1982 original one cut by Robert Ludwig. I think that one sounds amazing. It's the same uh, analog tapes that MoFi used to cut their two albums. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. So anyways, I hope this was an informative video today. I love doing these. Guys, please subscribe. And until next time, keep spinning those records and turn the music up.